Can you see it? It's kind of bright. Steve Arino! Uncle Dan! Can't look up, playing game. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> George, I have some errands to run, but when I come back, we'll get supper. So be a good little monkey and stay close, okay? <laughs> Uncle Dan, can I get a ride to the hardware store? I'm running out of batteries. Sure, it's my last delivery. I'll be right out. Ah, too bright. Come over here, I'll show you. Let's go in here. Huntley was pretty sure that monkeys shouldn't climb into trucks. And he knew cats definitely didn't belong in trucks. Hmm, I wonder where Steve went. Uh, beats me. Well, maybe he put down that game and went to play in the park. <laughs> They were closed in. <laughs> Hundley knew it. This was exactly the kind of thing that happened when you mixed monkeys with trucks. I'm going all the way. No, Steve's uncle couldn't hear him. And George couldn't see where they were going. Maybe George could find a clue and figure it out. Here was a clue. Maybe they were picked up by a giant monster. Or maybe it was a car wash that the giant monster was holding. Yoki was gathering her own clues. She knew that smell could only come from one place, the chef's favorite fish market. Hundley wanted to gather clues, too. He knew that sound. They must be going through the doorman's lobby. In fact, from what they saw, heard, and smelled, everyone had a good idea of where they were. Hey, I'm on Mars! Well, almost everybody. <laughs> the truck stopped. Finally, Uncle Dan would let them out and they would see where they'd gone. <laughs> Steve's uncle was gone. Hundley thought this was no time for monkey business with boxes. <laughs> Hundley couldn't wait to get back in his building. But where was his building? George wondered where their building was, too. I did it! I conquered the universe! Me! I have the skill! I have the power! I have... <laughs> no idea where we are. What happened? We're lost! Hang on, Steve. Snap out of it. 
Okay, you just flew a ship through three galaxies and captured six golden comets. You're Steve. If anyone can handle this, you can. Uh, don't worry, everyone. I'm here, and I'm gonna get us home. <laughs> uh, ah! If you're an avid bird watcher, it helps to be good at climbing trees. And to have a friend who's good at getting birds' attention. <laughs> nice shot! You're getting quite the collection of bird photos, George. <gasps> different birds talk to each other by making different sounds. Easy for birds, not so easy for us. Luckily, there are bird calls that do the work for you. <laughs> See? The pictures on the side tell you which bird you're calling. <laughs> Try one. <laughs> George had photos of robins and warblers, but he really wanted a picture of an osprey. Nice job! Only ospreys are harder to find. I've never seen one myself. Huh. Ospreys usually live near the ocean or big lakes where they can find more fish to eat. But if you're lucky, someday you might see one. <laughs> popcorn! Fresh popcorn! It's Mr. Popper and his popcorn wagon. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> George, see any good birds today? <laughs> You'll have to show me your photos. Popcorn and a lemonade? You betcha. Oh, want to help me make a new batch? <laughs> George loved helping Mr. Popper. He leveled off one cup of popcorn, poured it into the machine, and then... I know, it started all by itself. Mr. Popper always served the popcorn the same way. First, he grabbed a cup and a bag. Second, he pressed the button for the lemonade. Third, he scooped in the popcorn and tapped the bag. And he always served his customers with a smile. Oh, oops. <laughs> I like to keep things tidy. Now, let's see those photos. My goodness! Did you see a yellow-throated warbler today? Mm-hmm. We sure did. He flew off that way. <laughs> I wish I could have seen him. <laughs> You'd run my wagon for me? <laughs> sure. George can run the wagon, and I'll show you where we saw the warbler. Oh, goody! My nephew wears this when he helps me. <laughs> Perfect fit! You shouldn't have many customers. It's a slow day. And just like that, a monkey was in charge of a popcorn wagon. Excuse me, I'd like a popcorn and lemonade, please. It was his first customer. Make that customers. George's slow day had suddenly gotten very busy. He tried to remember all the steps. But he got off to a rocky start.
But the order of the order was all wrong. It was always quietest at Rankin's farm just before dawn. All the animals were fast asleep, including one little monkey on a camp out with his friend. Come on, George. Let's check the animals. <laughs> Chickens are following mom. Check. <laughs> the pigs are wallowing. Check. And the horses are eating. Again. Check. <laughs> Good idea, George. If we hurry, we can ride the tire swing before breakfast. Looks like the rubber gave out. Well, it was old. It's been there my whole life. <gasps> <laughs> wow, that would make the most giantest tire swing in the world. Can we have it, Grandma? I was going to use it as a planter. <sighs> Good idea! What if we trade you for it? Trade me? Mm-hmm. We could, uh, gather the eggs for you. All week! And you give us the tire. Hmm. I could use more time to spruce up the farm stand. But Jagger the rooster? I'm not sure he'll let you in the yard. He's pretty protective of those hens. <laughs> yeah, one little rooster's no match for a girl and a monkey. <laughs> okay, if you think you can handle it, you're now the official egg gatherers. <laughs> Thanks! Come on, George! <laughs> That rooster reminded George of a wiener dog who was very protective of his lobby, but with feathers and a beak. George knew how to handle him. But Hundley was nothing like this. Quick, George, run! <laughs> Jagger only allowed Mrs. Rankins in his chicken yard, and this furry person wasn't her. Hmm. We are the official egg gatherers. We can do this. It's just going to take a plan. Yeah. Those are the nesting boxes. It's where the hens lay the eggs. They had to get those eggs out without Jagger catching them. It was going to take something special to outsmart him. That's why chickens are so lucky. I wish I could be so clucky. That's why chickens are so lucky. I wish I could be so lucky. Distracting did not work. Apparently, Jagger wasn't hungry. Oh. <sighs> Earning that tire is going to be harder than we thought. 
and Bill's decorations were already down. But not George's. Ooh. Ha, she's still got some life in her. Uh, sort of. <gasps> oh, hey, I almost forgot the erector set. Ready to tackle the 1889 Paris exhibition? <laughs> hmm, sounds like a big project. What do you say we set it up in the attic where there's more room? <laughs> uh, hang in there, George. I'm just getting it started for you. Then she's all yours. It had been too cold to climb with Jumpy Squirrel or run with Dotty Deer or waddle with Dumpling Duck. George missed his animal friends. Since it was too cold for George to play outside, maybe his friends could come inside for a sleepover. Oh, uh, let's see here. Um, are these sleeping bags? <laughs> okay, so you want to have a sleepover with your friends? Yeah! <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> oh, and when you talk to Allie and Bill and whoever that other person is, See if one of them is good with erector sets. If you're having a sleepover, you'll need snacks, fun party games, and cozy sleeping bags. Now all George needed were guests. Jumpy didn't like being startled. Whatever the monkey wanted, it had better be good. <laughs> Who was Jumpy to say no to free nuts? Dotty wondered where Jumpy had gone. If it was good enough for the squirrel and the deer, Dumpling wanted in too. <laughs> Maybe they'd like to play a game. Dumpling knew what to do with eggs. Fortunately, George had extra game pieces. <laughs> Jumpy thought they were nuts. And Dottie thought the dice were sugar cubes. Maybe they should just go to bed. Huh? Was this their first sleepover? George would have to show them how sleeping bags worked.
The zucchini muffins are ready, George. Your favorite. Are you all right? Oh, I won't. Oh, her tooth, huh? Yeah, you might have a cavity there. We'd better see the dentist. Oh, I'll grab the muffins. Gnocchi didn't know what language George was speaking, but it wasn't cat. Hi, you two. Hi, Dr. Chu. I'm glad you came in. Don't worry, we'll get rid of your toothache. Oh, this is a model of what your teeth look like. Your incisor teeth bite pieces from food. Your canine teeth hold and tear food apart, and your molars grind food. That's plaque. It contains bacteria. Oh, bacteria are germs. That's right, and these germs feed on the food bits that get stuck in your teeth, especially sugar. The bacteria make acid that can create holes in your teeth, cavities. <laughs> Don't worry. I know you're a good brusher. Fluorite toothpaste usually keeps them away. Dan, can you get George ready? Sure. This way, George. Be a good little monkey patient. Go on. You can climb into the chair. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean... Oh. <laughs> okay. This is a saliva ejector. It's like a little vacuum cleaner to keep your mouth dry. And this squirts air and water. Oops. Dr. Chu wants me to take an x-ray to see if you have any cavities. This protects you while I do it. This is a digital sensor. Open. Now, bite down and hold still. Oh, you won't feel anything. It's just like when someone takes your picture. Excellent. Open. Yep. Those are your teeth. You sit back and relax. Dr. Chu will be right in. George's toothache kept him up all night. He sure hoped the dentist could find the problem. George remembered that spaceship. He and Gnocchi rode it through his body to find germs like toots that made him sick. <laughs> Maybe they could find out what was making his tooth hurt. George wondered if all cats could drive as well as Gnocchi. This felt squishy. It had to be his tongue. Creatures looked familiar to George. They seemed a lot like Toots the Germ. 